Well, hello, welcome back to the CG Bros. This is Brother Damien, and this is part three of our series on showing you how to use an end cloth simulation done in Maya and use it to create a fire simulation using 3D Studio Max and FemeFX. In part two, we left off after connecting up our flag to the FemeFX volume. We started tweaking the settings on the simulation tab. Well, let's continue on by adjusting some of these turbulent settings. Now, I found that starting with lower settings and then increasing them as I go keeps my simulation under control and it makes it easier to troubleshoot the simulation when I really start to change some of the other settings. Let's bring down the scale on the turbulence noise to 1 and re-simulate it. I'll pause it and come back when it's done. Okay, we're actually seeing some turbulence now in our simulation. At the default of 20, the noise scale was just too large to tell what was going on. Remember, start small with your settings and ramp up as you go. You know, I can also see a bit of smoke simulating here, and since I only want to simulate the fire, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck uh, Simulate Smoke here. And don't worry, I'll be covering smoke in another video. So let's reduce the turbulence noise scale further to 0.5 from 1, and resim it. Now I'll pause it and come back. Alright, this is looking a lot better. We can see a lot more interior structure to the flame, but I can also begin to see some voxelation. So let's increase the resolution of our fume effects grid. So back on the general tab, bring the spacing size down to 0.1 and resim again. That took a little longer to sim because we kicked up the res, but we're getting some nice definition now and I can really see some character developing here in our flame. Now at this point, I'd like to add a force to simulate the wind that is affecting the flag. We'll do this by creating a wind space warp and adding it into the fume effects volume. Alright, so let's come up to the create menu and down to space warps. Let's select forces and then select wind and then drag an icon out into the viewport. Let's adjust it to aim down the direction of our blowing flag. Let's also set the initial strength value of our wind to a low 0.35. Okay, let's go ahead and connect it up to the FumeFX grid. Select the grid, come up to the Modify tab and open up the FumeFX UI. Come over to the Object Source tab. Click on the Pick Object icon and select the wind. You should see it pop in here to the objects list. Let's go ahead and hit the Sim button. Now something to keep in mind when creating fire effects is determining what the fuel source is for your fire and how that fuel looks as it combusts. Fire coming from gasoline, wood, alcohol, or propane all have their unique appearances and behaviors. Alright, I'll pause it here and come back. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's a lot of fire being emitted from the flag and it looks very fat and gaseous to me. So I'm going more for a look as if the flag was soaked in a flammable liquid, something not too heavy, you know, maybe rum perhaps. But, uh, Let's go ahead and reduce the amount of fuel that the flag is emitting and see if that helps our sim out a bit. So let's select the object source and come up to the Modify tab and reduce the amount of fuel from 100 to 10. And let's sim it again. You know, another thing to keep in mind is that the fire itself generates a heat force that feeds the simulation itself. So the more fuel, the more fire there is. And the more fire there is, the more heat's generated. And that heat energy is continuously fed into that simulation. So lowering the fuel amount will give me a lot more control over how the flames behave. So I'll come back when it's done. Now it's looking a little dark. That's because with less fuel burning, there's less light given off. Now on the FemeFX UI, let's come over here to the Render tab and down to the Fire section. Now let's kick up this color to 2 so we can see it again. Okay, this is really starting to shape up. I can really see the tendrils coming off the edge of the flag here and the stranding that's occurring uh, on the inside is looking pretty good. Now the wind force doesn't seem to be affecting the fire very much. Now, I know small values are still influential, so I'm going to go ahead and look at some of the temperature settings here. So let's select the fume effects volume and go to the sim tab and down to the temperature section. We can reduce the amount of heat that the flames generate, but I don't want to do that because it will dramatically affect the motion. So I'm just going to reduce the amount that the flames rise up due to the heat. Set the temperature buoyancy to 0.1 and start the sim. I'll be right back. Alright, we're getting really close. The flames are hugging the animated flag mesh nicely. That's really what I'm looking for, is a nice, tight burn of the fuel on the flag. But I seem to have also lost uh, some of those nice flame licks that I was getting before. Although the licks are smaller, we can still see that the wind force we created is acting nicely on them. There are still some changes we do need to make, so I'll see you for part 4, where we'll do some final tweaking of the fume effects volume, the system turbulence, and the wind force. We'll see you then.